welcome back. Richard, guess what is in a week? <laughs> you know, it just dawned on me. Um, next, the next time we do a podcast, it's going to be November. November 1st. It, it, we're one week away from November 1st. And that means that, um, yeah, it's official. The holidays are here. That's and, really the holiday season. You know, uh, Halloween is sort of creeping up on us. Um, we've changed our clocks and done all the things we typically do in the fall. But now the holiday season is really here. If uh, Many of you are not going out, but if you were going out, um, you'd see that the um, sort of sliding by Halloween and getting ready for Christmas, uh, the, the Christmas, uh, Christmas season. And so, um, yes, here it is. We have two more, less than two, two months. We have a week until November. And right. that, that's the launch. And, and then what's, um, what makes this all the more, um, I don't want to say exciting, and I don't want to say um, worrisome, is that a few days later, um, we have election day. Uh, uh, the first Tuesday in November um, yeah. is the election day, and this promises to be made perhaps uh, the most contentious presidential election in our nation's history. Uh, we, right. we really don't know what's going to happen. It promises to be a very close, as far as uh, the experts are concerned, promises to be a very close, very contentious. And we have had to dust off the Constitution to see what happens if we don't have a clear winner by November 3rd. Uh, and there's a, there's a process that's followed. Um, and I think that it's sometime about the third week of November that a decision has to be made. Right. Um, constitutionally, a decision has to be made. But the, the weeks between now and that date in the third week of November could be very difficult ones for, for many of us. Right. And so today we're going to talk about, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And, uh, but more importantly, about how we're going to, how we should handle the, the holidays um, in the midst of all of this. Um, given, given this incredibly different, difficult year we've had we have this presidential election and all of the emotion that it brings we have a pandemic and all the emotion that that brings we have civil unrest and all the emotion that that brings so more than any other year we have these um all of these issues that have percolated um up to the surface certainly splashed all over uh, social media and broadcast media and um and here we are coming into the holidays which are typically uh, a difficult time for many of us because we argue about this stuff with friends and family members. And in years past, we've talked about how to manage these, um, these arguments or these differences. And I think more than ever, um, this is a year that we need to be particularly careful because we are really walking through this minefield of contentious issues. Right. And so we found this article by- um, A very interesting article. Yeah, not, an, not, a, not a psychologist, but I think a, a businessman who, um, well, actually a, a professor of business, his name is Joel Brockner. Mm -hmm. um, he is the Philip Hedelman Professor of Business at Columbia uh, Business School. Um, in the article, he provides several, uh, I think what are really valuable insights into um, understanding how we got to this very contentious, angry place, and what we might do about it. Um, and it, and it, it's an interesting perspective because it's from an organizational standpoint rather than strictly a psychological standpoint, but certainly all the principles he, he presents in this article have psychological implications and some good advice at the end. Right, right. And so we'll start out talking about um, what he refers to as the uncivil war right? right and and, and it is this the nature of um it, the nature of life right now um especially when we talk about uh the, the political climate um mm -hmm. where things are so divisive the things are so um separated we have mm -hmm. right and left republican democrat um liberal conservative everything is is very segregated um, in, in these two camps, and um, so many people are 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 unwilling to um, to listen and to hear and to compromise and to discuss. Um, instead, we you know we battle and we argue and we fight and um, mm -hmm. we create these um, teams of um, against. 
um, right. for lack of a better phrase. And um, again, it, it's creating very um, hot, heated um, time in our, our, our country's history right now. Right, that's right. And as far as politics is concerned, he begins the discussion with politics, right. um, appropriately enough. But as far as politics are concerned, um, I have this, if you look back through the last 40 or 50 years of, of American political history, um, there was a time when moral issues, I remember there were there have always been religious differences. People talk about John Kennedy being a Catholic and that sort of thing. But moral issues didn't invade, didn't insinuate into politics. But when moral issues, by moral issues, I mean um, gay marriage, lesbian, gay, um, LGBT rights, abortion, homosexuality, all that stuff. When, and when that was put into politics, politics became very personal. Right. We're not we're not we're not discussing should we raise the interest rate that that's a that's an economic discussion um should we should we raise the price of should we uh, raise the price of gold should we change interest rates those are sort of academic intellectual discussions that people don't get angry about i, I don't think anybody's going to get angry about the price of gold or angry about the interest rate but right. people will get angry about gay marriage they will get angry about gender preference and so when those issues were brought into politics, I think abortion is probably the, the biggest single issue that divides many people. That's a moral issue. It's a moral, religious, ethical consideration and a health consideration. Um, when that was brought into politics, suddenly politics became very, very personal. Now we're talking about murder, you know, uh, murdering a, a, an individual. That's a very different kind of discussion than talking about interest rates. And I think that's a really important point because as we look at those camps that I was talking about a moment ago, right. it is though it's those issues that have created those camps. That's uh, right. I mean, certainly there there are divisions based upon you know if we should pay more how much we should pay in taxes and those kind of that's things. Right. Mm -hmm. As you said, that's a that, that's an academic. That's a um, that's not a, a, a personal no moral. Um, you are. Um, faith, religious um, perspective. Um, no, nobody's saying, you know, my religious beliefs say that we can't raise taxes. Right. But, but right. we certainly place our religious beliefs in, in line when we are looking at abortion or gay That's rights right. or, mm -hmm. or those kinds of um, issues. That's right. And they become, when, when we get into moral or religious or ethical issues, we start to get very close to personal beliefs and personal issues. And so arguments, discussions, nobody's gonna scream at a relative over whether we should have a flat tax or a 20% income tax. You're not, you're not gonna attack another relative, but you will about abortion. You right. will about LGBT. You will about civil rights. You will about Black Lives Matter. When those personal belief issues are introduced, then the argument becomes personal and that's what makes it a little more heated is we're not discussing policy we're discussing very personal um issues of faith and issues of belief okay right. so that's that's one problem but he goes on i think what's interesting about his perspective and it's from an organizational standpoint is that um there are he 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 boils it down to two issues he said there's 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 an outcome or there's content or there's the issue itself and then what he calls process, which is the delivery, okay? And we can all identify with that because if you're talking about, if you're talking about the interest rate or what kind of income tax we should have or what the income tax rate should be, that's sort of an academic discussion that doesn't, doesn't get too hot. But you used the term hot topics the, a few minutes ago, and you're absolutely right. These become hot topics. So what he's saying is, we have topics, but we also have out, what he calls outcomes, and we also have a process. And that's what, the, that's what this article is about, about these two issues. Right, exactly. And, you know, and he, he points out those important factors. And again, we, we have dis, we've discussed this on, on this podcast many times. Um, but, you know, the fact that, you know, anger begets anger. And, and when we have disagreements and we um, attempt to defend 
those um, beliefs in um, against, you know, when we're mm-hmm. engaging with somebody who disagrees with us, instead of um, finding that, I think he uses the phrase, art, the art of compromise. The art of compromise. Mm-hmm. Instead of using the art of compromise to, to manage and work through those disagreements, instead we dig in and we, we, we dig our feet deeper into the sand mm-hmm. and, um, and we become immovable. Right. And, um, and then we st- all of a sudden we start, you know, um, making points and making arguments that um, are, are ridiculous. Um, that have nothing to do with what's really happening or, or what's really going to affect our lives um, and, and go well beyond the, the actual issue. That's right. They're not, they're not about issues. Right. Yeah, they're not about issues. Um, you know, um, when you talk about the toxic relationship between, and everybody talks about the toxic relationship between Democrats and Republicans. Okay. And... Um, you know, everybody says democracy is messy. We all we all know that people say it all the time. Democracy is messy, but the way you solve problems is through compromise. And so, for many many years, um, we got through the revolution, or the civil war, the civil rights, the depression, all of these things that, that the country has gone through. There were the the elected officials um, found a way to compromise and cooperate. I can remember, and I've said many times on our podcast, I can remember Bob Dole saying, you know, yeah, we fight it out in, in the Congress, but then we go to lunch together right. and we visit and we have we have parties and picnics and, and barbecues with each other. Though we differ on policy, we still are civil with each other. Um, that's gone now. Now we have this divide between the two parties. And, and now compromise and cooperation, are, rather than rather than becoming ways of solving problems, they're now seen as disloyalty. And you, you know, it's, it's almost um, sedition if you cooperate with somebody from the other party, you know, the, and, and you see this all the time. Well, we see it now with the Supreme Court vote. Uh, the Republicans, uh, Mitch, they're going to vote as a block. That's what, that's what we're always told every day, that it's not, it's not about the candidate and it's not about the timing. It's about if you're a member of this party, you're going to vote according to what the party says. You're not going to vote your conscience. You're going to vote your party. And that has created this. But when you have personal issues, that sort of stuff, uh, personal stuff, is uh, likely to likely to arise. And so you take an oath of office to defend the Constitution of the United States, but, but sometime between that uh, that oath of office and sitting in your chair, now you're loyal to party, not constitution, not country. Now there's a loyalty to party. And you can't, you can't cooperate with the enemy. The, the other party seems the enemy, not, not the other side. Right. Right? Not, not a different perspective. They're the enemy. And this has become a blood sport in this uh, particular election. Yeah, and I, and I think it's concerning because we, we hear that often now because um, you know we don't refer to it as um, the Republican Party, we refer to it as Trump's party, or yeah. we don't refer to it as the Democratic Party, we refer to it as Nancy Pelosi's party. Or um, and so, Democrat Party, you know. Right, and, well, and it came up with, you know. Right, it shouldn't be that, you know, if you're identifying as with this, um, you know, people become Republicans because they have, um, or people are Republicans because mm-hmm. they have a certain set of ideals as it relates to what they want for the country. And the same goes for people who um, are in the Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean that I have to agree with everything that everybody else in that party. Exactly. And, but, but we have that, as, as you said, it's, it's very um, red, and, red or blue. You know, right. you're either red or, or you're blue. You, you can't be anything in between. And that, um, that binary perspective of life is so artificial. We, we try to impose that um, binary ideal on everything, mm-hmm. um, whether it's politics or um, you know, decisions that, that we're trying to make about um, yeah. anything in our life. And, and things are much more gray. Things are much more purple, mm-hmm. if you will, right. um, than, than that. Yeah, take healthcare as an example. I mean, that's something that's close, near and dear to our hearts. But healthcare is an, an incredibly important issue. And there's probably some compromise between if you like your private insurance, 
and it's working well for you, keep it. But if not, let's have a different, let's have another option. Okay, let's have several options depending on what you need. But that takes compromise. And we're not even discussing healthcare. In the last three and a half years, nobody is even discussing it except let's get rid of this particular, um, uh, you know, the Affordable Care Act. Let's get rid of that. Well, no, what we should be doing is saying, okay, let's get a healthcare system that works for everybody. Do we want Medicaid for all? Probably not. Do we want private insurance for all? Probably not. So somewhere there, there's some compromise. But no, but in this atmosphere that we will not compromise, we will not cooperate, we're stuck with a healthcare system that doesn't work for, for millions and millions and millions of Americans because we can't compromise on a solution. And I think that one of the most, one of the important factors that, that, that is mentioned in this article is the way in which we even communicate some of these things. Right. And, um, you know, the, the uh, author there talked about um, studies that show the significant differences in the way that we communicate with each other based upon the information, the manner in which we, are, we receive information. That's right. Um, you know, when we're given information, even if it's bad news, if we're given right. it more courteous, in a more courte courteous way or in a more polite or a respectful manner, um, we receive that information much, much better than we do if it's done in a hostile, aggressive, confrontational manner. Exactly. Um, we know all of that intuitively. I think everyone who's listens to this podcast knows that, man, I really like it. Um, if, you, if you're going to give me bad news, I'd really like for you to do it nicely. Um, That's right. If you're going to fire me, do it gently, please. No. But right. we don't, we don't, um, we don't always follow that. We right. don't, mm -hmm. we don't always um, comply with what we know we would prefer ourselves. Right. That's right. And th then that's what he means by outcome and process. That outcome is the issue. Uh, or what happens and process is how it happens. And he, he talks about a particular, um, and I was, I was absolutely stunned when I read this because I thought, how does anybody get away with this? There's a, there was a particular company um, and they held a Zoom meeting. And so all the people, I don't know how many people were, were in this um, group, it sounded like there were 20 or 30 people. So you're all, all your pictures are up, everybody's uh, pictures up in the Zoom um, broadcast. And first of all, there was this lengthy wait. So all the people are there and they're waiting for the meeting to start. Mm -hmm. And finally the meeting begins and they are read a transcript in a, in a monotone. And the message was, you're all being fired. Oh, and then it just stopped. Then the meeting stopped. Okay. It just clicked off. And by the way, you're all being furloughed. So uh, clean out your desks. Um, you have 24 hours to get out of the building or you'll be escorted out and um, you're being furloughed. And that's, that's the end of it, period. And then the, the, the meeting ended, okay? They were absolutely flabbergasted. I mean, the, you can imagine they're sitting in stunned disbelief, okay? And so, and it, and so then he talks about a study that was conducted that said um, individuals who are laid off were seven time, 17 times more likely to file a wrongful termination lawsuit when they were told in a disrespectful rather than a respectful manner. There are actually people who study these things. And, and, and at, at least in, uh, prior to the pandemic, um, and so we're not talking about the, the, the emotional turmoil related to the pandemic, we're talking about prior to the pandemic, um, the, it was 17 times more likely that, that there would be a wrongful termination lawsuit depending on how the information right. was presented. Okay. So that's the process part. That's how you present it. Right. Okay. Right. So, so, and, and we see this, especially in politics mm -hmm. where, um, and, and not just with the politicians, but in all of us, when we when we're communicating with one another or talking with one another about politics, right. um, we, we believe that our perspective is absolute. We mm -hmm. believe that our perspective is right which means that other perspectives are wrong. And when we, when we work from that perspective, we tend to be more confrontational and disrespectful uh, using that, those same words um, when, we, when we're delivering that information. And so if, um, you know, if, if I am against um, Trump and somebody else is for Trump and we're having a discussion 
and then Trump wins the election, um, I'm going to then see myself and then the other people are, may, will likely see me as I was wrong. Right. Well, no, I had a different uh, perspective as it relates to certain policies and those kinds of right. things. But that doesn't mean that I was wrong. It just means that, you know, there were there was more agreement on one side than there was on another side. That's right. That's and that's all it means. And the operative word there is agreement or disagreement. Okay. Yeah. Because one of the things that I I hadn't thought about before, and one of the reasons I liked it, his perspective is that again, if you if you talk about outcome and process, once you tell somebody, once you present an opinion that differs from the other person's opinion, you're telling that other person that they're wrong. Right. Okay. It's inherent in the disagreement. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pro-life or pro-choice. Well, if I say I'm pro-life, the inherent message there is that if you're not, Right. If you're not, then you're wrong. Okay. So, so the reason we have to be careful is that as soon as you present an opinion like that, you are sort of putting the other person on notice that I'm right and you're wrong. I'm on the right side of this issue. Right. And you're on the wrong side of this issue. So right. That's why we have to be so careful that, that, that we forget that we're implying you're wrong. Right, and then we, we go further to, to list reasons why you're wrong. Right. And, and this kind of goes back to the, the um, injection of, of the moral issues, mm -hmm. because then it becomes, well, you're wrong because, right. and, and then we're listed, you know, religious perspectives or um, personal experience mm -hmm. perspectives right. that are, again, moral in, in nature. Um, and you know, those are your beliefs, but it doesn't necessarily mean that your beliefs are correct, are uh, universal, are absolute. It just that's means right. that's your perspective based upon your, your, um, your ideals and your um, upbringing and all those kinds of things. Right. Um, doesn't mean that you're right or that somebody else is wrong. Yeah, and when you, when you do that, when you delineate your reasons and your, um, you present your facts. Right using the term gently. You, you present your position, then you present your facts. Well, if somebody disagrees with you, then you start, then you start to get angry because you're, you, know, you accuse, well, you're, then you accuse the person of being something else just because they disagree with you. Then you say, well, you must be stupid. You must be this. You must be a racist. You must be a, a white supremacist, or you must be a cute. No, then, then it becomes personal. Okay, so, so inherent in a disagreement is that you're telling another person that they're wrong. And I present all my facts, and you still can't believe it. There has to be something wrong with you. Right. Okay, and the other person's giving you that same message back. So the, the outcome itself, the message itself, becomes a point of contention. So you're already causing, he uses the word pain, you're already causing pain by presenting, by, by having the disagreement. Right. Okay. And I then guess. it's compounded because if you get, if you have a delivery that's mm -hmm. disrespectful, that's right. derisive, that's dismissive, now you've added another layer to the pain. And that's typically what we do. We get aroused over these things. Absolutely. And, and I, I heard this interesting um, perspective as it relates to individual facts. You know, yes. uh, this is the fact from my perspective and this is the fact, you know, you have the facts from your perspective. And we, we think about facts as absolute, you know, mm -hmm. there can't be two separate sets of facts. However, when we're talking about these kinds of issues, um, th there is this other way to think about that. So if, if the, here's just a, a quick example. Um, if I'm sitting on one side of the room and you're sitting on the other side of the room and in between us, there's a table mm -hmm. and sitting on that table is a, a vase of flowers. Mm -hmm. And I say, um, all right, I want you to, I want each of you to um, draw what you see um, with the flowers uh, in front of you. Mm -hmm. We both sit there and let's pretend like we're, we're both good uh, drawers and we, we draw what we see and we compare those two pictures. Those pictures are going to be different. Right. Simply right. because we're sitting on different sides of the table, different sides of the flowers. 
it doesn't mean that I'm right and you're wrong. It doesn't mean that my facts, because if I draw it the way that I see it, those are my facts. That's my reality. Mm. And you draw it from your reality with your facts. It doesn't mean that your facts are right and mine are wrong or mine are right and yours are wrong. It just means that we're coming at it from a different perspective. And we need to recognize that it's not a personal thing. Right, right. Because I drew my flowers differently than you did doesn't mean that it's a personal thing. It doesn't mean that you're you know, incompetent or that you just don't see things the way that things really are. It just means that you're looking at it differently than I am. That's right. And we have to keep that into mind because when we're talking about all of these other things, whether it's taxes or um, you know, you know, LGBTQ um, uh, issues or or abortion or any of these hot topic issues, right? We're coming at it from different perspectives, right? And and, and the whole this whole issue of facts, we, we have to be very careful with those, okay? Because there aren't many facts. There are some, okay? There's some. There's a reality that we deal with. We know that gravity exists, and we know that the Earth revolves around the Sun, and that it's spherical, not flat. Um, so there are, there are things that we, we can all agree on, okay? But people talk about, well, those are your facts. No, those are not your facts. There, there's no such thing as your facts. Um, when we argue political positions, political issues, people say, well, this is what happened. Well, the fact of the matter is nobody knows what really happened because right. unless you were in a closed door meeting where that policy was made, you don't really know what the discussion was and you don't know how we got there. So we have to be very careful about we're, we're presenting our facts that were presented to us by a broadcast medium, either a magazine, a newspaper, or a TV. Uh, th those that we, in, we, in, we incorporate those, we internalize those as facts. They're not facts. They're, they're information that's been reported. So you're not arguing facts. You're arguing information. It may or may not be accurate. Right. And... In, in using you know relating those terms to the flower example mm -hmm. um th the only fact is that there was a vase of flowers we can agree that there was a vase of flowers on the right. table right. that was the fact right. everything else is perspective right mm -hmm. those aren't facts those are perspectives because we i can't see what you can see right. and That's so right. that um and, and you can't see what i can see right. so those those can't be facts mm -hmm. because it, they, they, they're they don't exist to you because you can't see them. Right. The only fact is that there's a table with, with a, a vase of flowers. Right. Um, and you know, the only fact with some of these policies is that there is in fact a policy. Right. That's well, it. And you can even make it more complicated. Let's say two um, artists, two um, talented artists draw the flowers mm -hmm. and each, then you lay their pictures on the table and then say, which is better? Right. How do you, what, what do you mean, which is better? How would you even make that decision? On what basis are you? So that's the dilemma that we get into with these issues, is that we have information and not facts. And it's, and it's almost impossible to say which is better. Okay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we argue, and then we get heated, then we get angry, we get aroused, mm -hmm. and that puts us into the process part of this. Okay? Right. And that's where the, the delivery you make, mm -hmm. the attitude that you have, adds a layer of pain. So you have pain because you're dealing with a disagreement mm -hmm. and you're automatically telling somebody, I'm right, you're wrong. Right. <clears throat> and then then you have the delivery itself. And what he said, what, what studies have shown, and, and this is what I like from the organizational literature, which I typically don't read, right. is they said, let's, let's use the example of the issue creates a unit three of pain. A pain right. unit of three. If you have a derisive, dismissive, disrespectful, deliver hostile delivery, that's a unit of pain of three. Right. Okay. So now you have three for the disagreement and three units for the uh, nasty delivery. Right. And he said the problem is, is that you think three and three is six, but he said it's not a it's not just a cumulative effect, it's a multiplier effect. Right. And he said, you don't have six units of pain, you end up with nine units of pain. So right. just by having an angry delivery, you, you multiply the effect of the disagreement. And that's, what, that's where we get into trouble in family gatherings because people start to argue with each other about their positions mm -hmm. and you have a multiplier effect. And the angrier you get, 
the higher the pain becomes. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Now he, he does, he does offer some hope. There is hope. Right. Mm -hmm. um, which, which is nice. Because uh, again, we are entering into the holidays and we would like for there to be some hope um, that we're going to make it through without too many um, uh, family fights and arguments that uh, end badly. Um, and so, but, he's, but he talks about, you know, we have to think about that delivery and the process and right. um, how, we're, how we're delivering that information right. and communicating with one another. Right. So how do we deliver these negative? We want to deliver what are going to be negative because there are disagreements, especially now with, you know, we're arguing about masks and we're arguing about social distancing and reopening and politics and presidents and um, all kinds of socialist civil unrest and racial issues and social justice issues. So there are bound to be some heated discussions. So how do we keep them cool enough that they don't create problems? Well, one of the things um, <clears throat> he says is, we have differences of opinion. Uh, we, we, we should be able to have differences of opinion. Um, Bernie, you have, a, you have a range of friends, um, and I'm sure they, they're on a whole political spectrum, of uh, friends and family, okay? Some are very, very conservative. Some are very, very liberal. Some don't care. Some care deeply. Right. Uh, and they're allowed, you allow them to have right. the differences. It doesn't matter. I mean you're not going to push anybody out of your life because they have one position or the other. Right. They're, they're all welcome. Absolutely. And jumping ahead, a, a few of his suggestions is, mm -hmm. I'm not going to try to change them because I know that I'm not. Exactly. Right. Um, you know, we will, I will listen and I will hope that they would listen to me, but I'm not, my goal isn't to change them. That's right. Um, my, my goal is just to help them, you know, to have them think. Um, right. Just like when I talk to them, um, I want information from them to to cause me to think. Mm -hmm. I, I hope the information that I provide them will cause them to think, not to change them. No, and all I all, rather than change, you, we need to think in terms of listening. Okay, right. well, first of all, it's okay to disagree. Right. That that's not the issue. We're going to disagree. Mm -hmm. um, so, but but all I want, all I want to do is I want to listen. I will listen to what your position is. And that's all I expect in return. I, I, just, I just want you to listen. I will listen to you, but don't approach me as if you want to change or criticize my position. And I think that's where we get into trouble. You know, that while well, Obama started it, it wasn't Trump, it was Obama. It wasn't Obama, it was Bush. It wasn't Bush, it was Carter. I mean, stop. There's no need to do that to each other, okay? That's not the issue and that's not what's important. Um, all, all I need to do, all I should do, is listen to your position. I have a family member, um, and I care deeply for this person, but this person has a very different perspective than I do. Mm -hmm. um, all I want to do is listen to that perspective. I respect the person's intellect. I respect their judgment. And all I want to do is hear that perspective. Mm -hmm. I, and I will listen attentively and I will listen politely to that perspective. It doesn't mean that I need to change. It, it doesn't, and I'm not going to try to, ch I just want you to listen politely to my perspective. You can do whatever you want with it. You know, it's like William Glasser. You, you say to people, this is how I feel. This is how you make me feel. Those I messages. You can do whatever you want with it. I just want you to have the information. What you do with that information is entirely up to you. And I'm not going to get angry if you don't accept my perspective. I right. just want to listen. All I want is for you to listen to my perspective. Listen politely and listen to the complete message. Right. And, and you know, thinking about those I messages, um, you know, instead of saying, you make me angry, <laughs> right. Um, right. you say, I feel angry when you say yeah. this, when you right. do that. Um, it, it's not your fault. It's just no. the way that I feel, and I'm just giving you that information. And, and that goes to you know, one of his last suggestions, and that is we have to regulate our own emotions. We have, we to, have to regulate, that's and right. Keep that contained so that we don't, um, you know, how many times are we the one that, start, one that starts the anger? You know, that's right. Frustrated, and then that person then becomes frustrated. Right. The psychological message here 
is that you have to regulate your emotions. You have to, you have the obligation to regulate your anger. That, that, and you have to do it in all circumstances, not just at holiday time, not just at the end of the year. You have to regulate your emotions every day. That's the, that's the challenge here, is how do you regulate your emotions and can you regulate them? Okay. Yeah. Because if you, if, you, if you can't, if you find yourself getting angry, then, then it's not politics that's the problem. It's emotional dysregulation that's the problem. Absolutely. Okay. And, um, so it, it's important that we, um, that we think about all those things, um, you know, not argue facts, think about the difference of opinion and um, just listen to each other respectfully and don't, you know, try to change each other. Um, and and th by doing so, you know, hopefully we can make it through these holidays uh, despite the, the pandemic, despite the civil unrest, despite the election, despite all of these things that would otherwise insert, um, you know, toxicity right. um, into our interactions and engagements with others. Um, and we can get through it relatively unscathed. And right. um, look forward to 2021, right. uh, in a few months. Right. Yeah, 2020 will end. You know, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get to the end of the year. But prepare yourself. Um, you know, the advice we want to give you is prepare yourself for the difficulties that inevitably are probably inevitably going to arise. I mean, it is going to be contentious election. It is going to be a contentious pandemic. It is going to be a contentious civil rights, uh, civil liberties, civil social justice issues. Um, and we have. On top of that, we have the World Series and other athletic contests, you know, that people will argue about. And so, um, you know, prepare yourself mentally and emotionally for the difficulties that are probably going to arise. It's, it's going to be a very different kind of holiday season. So prepare yourself emotionally. Right. Learn how to regulate. Regulate your emotions. Regulate your anger. Absolutely. So. As Ruth Gator, Gator Binsberg as Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, said, <clears throat> the interesting thing about her, her best buddy, <laughs> a personal friend, was uh, Scalia, yeah. who was at the complete opposite end of the Constitution. He was at one end of the Constitution, and she was at the other. They have very, very different political beliefs, but they were dear friends. She, she, they were very good friends, and yet they held completely polar opposite positions on the Supreme Court. Yeah. Um, and she said, we can disagree without being disagreeable. Mm -hmm. I think that's the message that we take in the next two months. Absolutely, absolutely. So Smart woman. Ab yes, she was. Good Sorry. advice. All right, well, that is it then for today. Um, until next time, stay happy, <laughs> stay healthy. Until November. <laughs> It's just it's right there. So, oh my goodness. All right. So stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. <laughs>